This week, Ducati announced a whole bunch of updates to their super duper naked bikes, the Street Fighter V4s. Yes, we've got improvements to the V4, the V4S, and the Mega Premium SP model. And so in this video, we'll go over the eight best features that you need to know about. Now, first up, this will be welcome news to many. The Street Fighter V4 now gets the same shape tank as the Panigale V4, and as a result, sees a boost in fuel capacity. You see, the Desmo Sedici Stradale V4 is a pretty thirsty engine, as you'd probably expect with some pretty serious performance figures at 208 horsepower peak. But 7.6 litres of fuel consumed per 100 kilometres is still somewhat intense. That's 31 US or 37 UK miles per gallon, and bear in mind that these official consumption figures tend to be on the favourable side. For reference, another super naked like the KTM 1290 Super Duke R uses just 5.6 litres per 100 kilometres, according to their spec sheet, although granted it's quite a way down on power. But even the recently announced BMW M1000R, which is comparable to the Street Fighter on power, you know that's good for 6.4 litres per 100 kilometres, presumably as it makes use of their shift cam variable valve timing and lift system. So yes, more fuel capacity, up to 17 litres from 16, will definitely be appreciated, even if it's not a massive improvement, especially on a bike that doesn't have a fuel gauge. Yes, that is correct. The Street Fighter V4s still don't have a fuel gauge, despite costing 21 grand and upwards. At least you can take some comfort, quite literally, from the fact that the Panigale V4 fuel tank is also said to provide better ergonomics for the rider, so more support under braking and better grip for your legs through corners. So. At least that's good. Now another change for 2023 is that the Street Fighter lineup now comes as standard in the monoposto setup, i.e. single seat so no pillion seat or pegs fitted from the dealer. And it makes sense, the majority of riders will be solo on a bike like this, and only the bravest of passengers will be willing to climb aboard that miniature perch with 208 horsepower of V4 madness about to propel them into another dimension. That said, if you do find someone willing to undertake such an experience, the pillion seat and footrests are supplied as standard equipment. Presumably they come in some sort of goodie bag or something, and so you can obviously swap the seat out and bolt on the pegs to make that accommodation. Realistically though, this is a one-up track machine and for sporty road rides, and so the geometry has been evolved in line with the new Panigale lineup. So the main tweak is that the swing arm pivot has been moved up by 4mm, and this is said to improve the anti-squat action, which Ducati say helps the rider thanks to greater stability precision and the ability to maintain the trajectory when exiting corners and, in general, in all acceleration situations. So basically when you're on the gas, the bike will have a tendency to squat at the rear and so as you wind on the accelerator out of a corner, if it's allowed to squat that's going to affect the geometry of the bike which will potentially unload the front tyre and cause understeer. So Ducati with this change are just trying to find that right balance. On top of that they say the weight distribution has been moved slightly towards the front which gets more weight onto the front wheel and they say the result here is better accuracy and speed on corner entry. Would any of us realistically notice any of these changes out on the road? Probably not. But for those who can actually really test a bike like this out on the track, then they could be welcome improvements. As for the engine, well it's largely unchanged so you've still got 208 horsepower peak and 123 newton meters of peak torque, but they have given it a larger outlet at the exhaust which is said to reduce back pressure and as such the engine calibration has been been updated to suit. They say the result is an improvement in engine performance, although the figures don't look massively different, but there is a claim in the presentation that 70% of peak torque is available down at 4,000 RPM. There's no comparison with the previous generation, but still sounds good on paper. Probably the biggest area of updates for this bike though is with the electronics with loads of new stuff carried over from the new Panigales. So there are four engine modes of full, high, medium and low, full giving you the absolute works apart from in first gear. High and medium were previously available but they now get new maps that are specific to each gear which is quite something. And then you've got the low mode which limits peak power to a mere 165 horses and gives you a particularly manageable throttle delivery which plays into the new wet riding mode. On top of that you've got a new gear by gear engine brake control system, a revision to the quick shifter software that means it ought to work better at both partial and full throttle, improved cooling fan strategies, 
and then an update to the graphics on the dash with a new MotoGP inspired track Evo layout, which they say makes the most important information like revs and rider aid interventions more visible at a glance. Now this is probably a good time to say a quick thanks to Speeder Angels for sponsoring the channel. They make dash protectors for pretty much the whole Ducati lineup and they only cost you a few quid but they could save you hundreds. Take the Speedo for the Street Fighter V4 for example, if you scratched or damaged it you'd be looking at 850 quid to replace it. So I'd thoroughly recommend Speedo Angels and their products and they make them for most new bikes from all the major manufacturers so you'll find their full product range down at the link in the description along with a 20% discount code specifically for my viewers. Lastly on the electronics front you've got a new lithium battery for the S model and that'll save 1.7 kilograms versus the previous year model. Now they say this helps to keep the total curb weight in check and at 197.5 kilograms that is indeed about the same amount down on the previous generation. I mean it's not a huge margin of improvement but at this price point you probably expect a lithium battery. From a styling perspective it's still largely the same and it's got those distinctive looks with the DRL at the front but there are tweaks to the bodywork and graphics so you can see some changes to the tank shrouds to accommodate the new tank shape. We've got a blacked out finish on the radiator surrounds and then bolder graphics for the Ducati and V4 logos which follows on from a similar approach on the new Panigales. The standard Street Fighter V4 starts at £21,095 and that one comes in the Ducati red only. The Street Fighter V4S gets a few upgrades like some lighter forged Marquezini wheels and the electronic semi-active Olin suspension and that one comes in at 23195 also available in the red but there's now this rather nice grey Nero finish available with some pops of the Ducati red on the rims and logos. For anyone who thinks that all sounds a bit basic then there's also the updated SP model which is of course called the SP2. £30,595, so what do you get for your money? Well, for a start, you've got all of the updates above for the 2023 model year, plus some even lighter split five-spoke carbon wheels, so that's another one4 kilograms save versus the S model. Super top-end Brembo style MR brake calipers, an STM Evo SBK dry clutch, an Olin suspension setup that's identical to the Panigale for a more sporty ride, adjustable foot pegs, a carbon front mug guard and the winter test livery which gives the SP models their distinctive look. It really is quite the track weapon but even at a massive 208 horsepower it may surprise you to learn that it's not the most powerful production naked bike currently on the market. Now to find out what is I've made a thorough list of the most powerful unfed bikes from each of the major manufacturers and you can watch it by clicking right here right now.